a very good morning to all a hearty welcome to the four day international webinars as a part of faculty a student development program organized by sri venkateshwara college of pharmacy hrla srikakulam under vikas education society in association with isvc it gives me an immense pleasure to have you all on a single platform of knowledge sharing although drastic situations are prevailing surrounding us due to covid-19 we got support with huge number of registrations i can happily announce that we have attracted 500 plus registrations at this outset i especially thank our management and patrons of today's fdp session dr b sriramurthy garu dr b v s n murthy garu dr i shankar rao garu and to our principal and co-patron of today's event dr k v nagoji garu director isvc team mr i kishor garu for their valuable support at each and every step on this occasion i feel very much honored to give a brief about our college the vekreshwara college of pharmacy as there is huge demand for pharma professionals in india as well as in abroad because education society in the year 2003 established sri venkateshwara college of pharmacy with the diploma in pharmacy course later in 2004 the pharmacy 2008 m pharmacy with the three specializations pharmaceutical technology pharmaceutical analysis pharmacology and in 2014 pharmacy course was also launched with the affiliation of andhra university along with pharmacy courses vikas educational society also established other prestigious courses like engineering and technology mba agricultural bsc veterinary polytechnic horticulture fisheries and institute of education ipet c and intermediate and we wish in near future the vikas education society will also establish spread its branches with the launch of medicine course also once again a hearty welcome to our delegates as well as the today's speaker dr a wasdevra garu e learning lead senior lecturer department of chemistry school of pharmacy international medical university malaysia and other delegates of this today's session and also four day international faculty and student development program now i request our principal sir and patron of this fdp program dr k e v nagoji karu address the fdp program thank you thank you padmasri madam respected management of vikas education society dr b sriramurthy sir dr ai shankar da sir dr b v s murthy sir and director program. of isvc ai kishor sir and coordinators Prasant Padmasri Bhavani and all other faculty members of Sri Venkateshwara College of Pharmacy and today's speaker Dr. K. Vasudeva Rao participants a very very good morning to all of you on behalf of our management faculty and myself a warm welcome to all the participants and the today's eminent speaker dr a vasudeva rao to this international series of webinars e faculty and student development program first of all let me thank our management and iscc director i kishor garu for their continuous support to conduct this program this student faculty development program will be held for about 4 days and on first day that is today dr a vasudeva rao e learning lead and senior lecturer from international medical university malaysia will deliver a speech on the topic online collaborative learning and student engagement using e learning strategies 
and on day 2 that is on 18th of july dr n koteswar rao assistant professor of pharmacology california health sciences university esa will deliver a speech on exosomes improve sensory and motor function in ischemic stroke induced rats and on day 3 that is on 19th july dr shivashankar panda associate professor agasta university agasta jajia psa will deliver a speech on the topic rational approaches in drug design and on fourth day 20th july dr a swapna manager sergeant pharmaceuticals stamberg illinois psa will deliver a speech on extractables and decables so i hope all these topics are very very useful to not only to the students but also to the faculty members from various colleges including our college faculty also and i hope this will be a very useful session or program and i wish all the participants a very good luck and thank you all for giving me this opportunity thank you padma shri madam for giving me this opportunity now over to padma shri madam padma shri padmasri madam madam mute lo unnaru okay now i request our uh, uh, iscc director i kishor sir to address the gathering sir please a very good morning to all the uh, participants firstly i would like to congratulate the uh, pharmacy team and uh, especially dr nagoji garu for coordinating this four day international webinar program uh, i think it's uh, definitely useful for all the uh, faculty and students to understand uh, various topics and it's a, it would be a great uh, privilege and opportunity for them to hear from the experts uh, today's speaker dr wasdev rao uh, i think uh, the topic is very uh, keen on the uh, very need of the hour on understanding the e learning strategies uh, for all the trainers out in the uh, uh program today so uh, i'm i'm pretty sure it will be a, a great session for all these four days uh, i congratulate uh, everyone for being a part of the program and i also see that there are huge number of registrations so i'm just hoping all these four days will be uh, absolutely uh, useful and uh, you would take uh, most out of it thank you all and uh, have a good day సర్ మైక్ ఆపేసారు సర్ సర్ మైక్ ఆపేసారు మీరు అవజే సర్ మ్యూట్ లో ఉన్నారు సర్ ఒకసారి అన్మ్యూట్ అయి మాట్లాడండి మాధురి యా సర్ ఆడిబుల్ సర్ ఆ నౌ ద సెషన్ యు ఓవర్ టు మాధురి మేడం అండ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ మాధురి మేడం టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ టుడేస్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ ఏ వాసుదేవ్ రావు సర్ థాంక్యు గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సర్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ i am very much honored and take the privilege on behalf of sri venkateshwar college of pharmacy to introduce the eminent speaker of today's session dr a vasudev rao sir currently e learning lead and senior lecturer in pharmaceutical chemistry department school of pharmacy international medical university malaysia sir is very well known personality for our venkateshwar college of pharmacy So completed diploma pharmacy from Venkateshwar College of Pharmacy Echarla B pharm from Maharaja College of Pharmacy Vijayanagaram and M pharm and PhD both are from Andhra University Visakhapatnam Sir was awarded CSIR senior research fellowship by the government of India for completing his PhD degree from Andhra University in the year of 2013 Sir started his career as assistant professor at Sri Venkateshwar College of Pharmacy Echarla 
and later on he got placed in as a senior lecturer come head of pharmaceutical chemistry department at asia metropolitan university malaysia after onwards he got another opportunity as e learning lead and senior lecturer in pharmaceutical chemistry department school of pharmacy international medical university malaysia sir is a very expertized knowledge in the field of drug design and synthesis of bioactive hybrid molecules by the process of computer aided drug design and computational drug discovery with focus pioneering on hit to lead optimization associated with the development of novel bioactive ligand to fight against multifactorial diseases sir had published many international and national papers in reputed journals total of 65 public publications sir got many prestigious awards grants and achievements of introduction medical university achievement award 2019 in e learning and innovation of technology enhanced learning he is principal investigator for prestigious frgs grant 2019 awarded by ministry of education malaysia sir won one gold medal for his topic e learning innovation project showcase titled vista virtual innovation via simulation training and assessment by the international medical university sir recognized and conferred him by the best title as eng leader in the health and medical science discipline by the venus international foundation in the occasion of second higher education leadership may 2019 sir developed innovative teaching and learning methodologies for the various course modules based on new drug discovery in uc and pg students at international medical university now i warm welcome to dr vasudev rao sir to start the fdp on the topic of online collaborative learning and student engagement using e learning strategies and instructional training for education thank you sir thanks for giving this opportunity to introduce the speaker speaker mike hand over to speaker sir thank you thank you distinguished organizing committee members sri venkateshwar college of pharmacy i am glad to take this opportunity to uh, represent international medical university firstly i would like to thank international medical university for granting me the approval and uh, association to present my topic in today's webinar session and without any further delay i'm going to share my slides the today's topic of discussion is online collaborative learning and student engagement using e learning strategies and instructional training for educators let me start with what's the necessity of doing all this online instructional training and all because we are in a pandemic situation if you closely look into the pandemic situation this is just one day before the statistics obtained from who coronavirus disease dashboard if you look at the five the number if you closely look into nearly within one day it crossed almost 6000 deaths if it is so if you closely observe this pandemic situation the 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 te teaching and learning strategies and the global education completely affected due to this pandemic situation this is the statistics obtained from recent global impact as well so these are the various uh, regions already adapted to the complementary therapies which are actually looking forward to deliver the education system well every most of the items if you consider here online and broadcast tv and radio radio and tv only online only so these are the various methods of by which they are trying to engage the students and deliver the program learning outcomes this is what the strategic impact currently we are facing as as all educators we together facing this problem and this is the impact of covid-19 on the global education scenario moving on the let us see what is the basic rationale of doing the things the international telecommunication union statistics states that in the based on the 2019 statistics 53.6% of the global population almost equal to 4.1 billion people are using the internet 
So adopting online based strategies could be more rational at this pandemic situation, as we all know, based on the uh, global situation. Now, moving on, what is the exact aim of today's workshop? The major aim of today's workshop to introduce participants with information related to collaborative learning strategies and to equip with online student engagement tool. This is the main aim of today's uh, FDP section. The intended learning outcomes designed in a such a manner upon completion of this webinar as a participant, you will be able to acquire a general knowledge of the collaborative learning strategies for the student engagement in a learning process. Acquire the skills to use an online collaborative learning tool, the very famous tool you most widely called as Padlet for the student engagement in their collaborative learning environment or activities. These are the two intended learning outcomes. Upon completion of this webinar, you all participants could successfully achieve these learning outcomes. Moving on to the next one. So this is the webinar overview. The content of today's webinar consists in planned in a such a manner it's very organized and the contents of my presentation includes the introduction to general concepts of the collaboration learning and top 20 concepts proposed in the collaborative learning aspect and framework for online teaching, collaborative learning strategies and e-learning design, how to do a e-learning instructional design, what basic framework we may need to consider. So step-by-step -step instructional training on Padlet. It's one of the tool to conduct collaborative learning in the online platform. So followed by summary and acknowledgements followed by references. Moving on. So let me start with a simple basic knowledge test. Is collaborative learning and cooperative learning are both the same? Yes or no? Please answer this question and keep the answer to yourself. We are going to evaluate that in the latter stage. This is the pre-knowledge test. Before we talk about a concept, whether do you have any idea about the concept or closely related concept to that concept? Is there any differentiation? So such type of analysis and research questions will trigger our experience well in the next few minutes. Let us see. So what's collaborative learning? Collaborative learning is nothing but a situation in which two or more people learn to or attempt to learn something together. So the process of learning will take place in groups. So the group learning or group work or team building or teamwork sharing the ideas, networking among the ideas generated by different students. So all these things will generally comes under a group work. So the collaborative learning is one sort of group work where unlike individual learning, people will engage in the collaborative learning and another's resources and skills will be utilized productively. This is one of the basic concepts we can consider. Because in this pandemic situation, students are feeling the most important, the, the challenge is they left unengaged and student engagement is going to burning problem in this online delivery. So what are the standard modes of delivery in an academic setting? If you look into an academic setting, the standard modes of delivery are majorly two types. One is online education, the classroom education. You may raise some doubt that collaborative learning is only applicable for online education or both. Collaborative learning is the concept can be adaptable to both the modes of education. So we can also adapt this one to online education as well. So as I mentioned just now, there is a close structural synonym to the collaboration is also a cooperation. If you look into the close structural resemblance of the collaboration and cooperation, the structure of the cooperation includes the teacher-centered approach, whereas co collaborative learning is a student-centered approach. So this is a unidirectional, this is a multidirectional. Why? Because the student's approach is the theories and networking 
everything will help at the student's level where in case of teacher the teacher will be the directive it's a one way process and it's care uh, keenly on the teacher centered process whereas if you look into the assessment point of view in cooperative learning closed assessments so there is a definite system of marking and by the end of the section you will be decided with the markings and what is the result so in case of collaborative learning it's an open ended assessment whereas the assess assignments can be of different diversified questioning and students can enhance their knowledge with respect to the skills and do the brainstorming networking among them and do the collaborative work to identify a new hypothesis or new knowledge and contribute to the existing form of the knowledge this is what it generally takes place in collaborative learning process so moving on to the next one this approach is used for foundational knowledge rather i cannot say cooperative learning is completely replaceable using collaborative learning it's not possible at all because the cooperative learning is the fundamental concept so fundamental concept is the basic foundation to perform the collaborative learning process so without fundamental knowledge and without fundamental core concept idea a student cannot ex excel in the collaborative learning environment so this is one of the interrelated process so cooperative learning is always let connected to a collaborative learning as well an educator establishes learning structure and content as we all know this is teacher centered so educator will come up with the various process of assessments and what are the various formative assessments and summative assessments are generally takes place and all those things will group together and whereas in case of uh, the collaborative learning group will shares the outputs and this is a group assessment and this is not a completely designed by the uh, a teacher it can be a product that can be developed based on the team work on collaborative work by the Uh, sequence of students and group of persons involved in that particular activity so uh, what is the answer what's your opinion on the first question this is the answer and feedback so based on the table of differentiation just now we discussed so far is collaborative learning and cooperative learning both are same definitely not because there is a ample difference in the concepts and approaches as well so this is the first knowledge pretest so that you could understand when ever you come across with these two strategic words one is collaboration the other one is cooperation in terms of educational philosophy both are actually different moving on with a, a well established framework i would like to introduce to you all which is recently published in the year 2019 a framework for an online teaching this in this framework if you see this one trifecta of student engagement this trifecta of student engagement is one of the strategy where developed in terms of uh, online teaching professional development course to the faculty so in this uh, professional development course what the other actually embedded into the document so if you look at this whole strategy this connected with three basic sub units the basic sub units includes learner to content learner to learner and learner to instruction instructor so this is the arrangement of different process where it is forming part of the framework in a online teaching so if you ask me is this the only framework available for online teaching no this is just an introduction to one of the framework which is available so you can explore n number of frameworks and you could identify which one is the best suitable way for your academic setting for your organization and for your target audience or students or program so it's all depends on not a adopting a framework so it all depends on how far this framework is fits into your organization model it fits fits into your academic setting so this is how where the alignment is generally takes place so if the alignment is too much deviated the purpose of the alignment will be totally defeated so that is the reason why before you adopt any framework 
you can explore the different strategic frameworks developed by educational philosophies and clean, clearly identify what are the strategic goals of that framework, whether these framework rules are keeping to our expected standards, whether our facilities and our a student target audience can keep up to that particular standards or not, we have to do the analysis. The concept analysis and mapping is initial part which takes a major, major important uh, decision towards adopting an online teaching. Simply adopting an online teaching and without delivering the expected learning promises, whatever we promise it to the students is not actually the right process. So we need to carefully analyze the framework totally and based on the framework, whether the framework is whether it fits into academic setting or not is the critical analysis need to be done so that we can adopt in a good way. So this is one of the framework I would like to introduce to you all. And this one is completely it, targeted the centered of uh, uh, main um, framework element is the centered element is learner so learner to content learner to learner and learner to instructor so the role of instructor if you clearly look into this one there is only 30 percent so the learner uh, information the learner engagement is more when compared to the instructional engagement that means this is the main online strategic process so the learner centered process should be more uh, implemented when compared to the teacher centered process. Moving on to the next one. What is the main problem in this online engagement? The main problem is student engagement. It is the major challenge because not everyone have digital competency, not everyone Every teacher, not even every teacher is good at digital fluency. So not every teacher may be familiar with the online based tools and how to deliver the content properly. So these are all various challenges. Among all, here the effector is mainly the student engagement in the learning process. Whereas in the, in, if you consider teaching process, of course, the effector is also an educator. So this is how we generally analyze the situation. So basing on the situation analysis, current pandemic situation, the student engagement is becoming very, very big and critical problem to uh, uh, raise the thing. So how to address such type of um, problem? So we may need to identify some concepts. So let us see some concepts associated with this identification. So the collaborative learning strategies for teachers, this particular information contributed by Miriam Clifford. I have to thank her for her greatest contribution to the field of e-learning. So the 20 collaborative learning strategies for teachers are defined in this presentation. Let us see one by one and what is the main objective of introducing that strategy and what is the possible outcome of that strategy. Let us look into one by one in detail. So the, the outcome of first one, establish group goals. Why? What is the objective of establishing group goals? Because it involves students. It involves students and the learning process will take place and every single student will be accountable for the outcome. And what is the best outcome up from this uh, particular action? Active and peer learning process will take place. Dear participants, the next one, keep go groups mid-sized. What does it mean? The size, the total size of the class is also matters because some may feel left behind, some may feel unanswered, some may feel they did not get any sort of opportunity to express their views and all the different types of opinions and racial discrimination may happen. So keeping all these things in view, so initiate small group teaching. Small group teaching is one of the best way to effectively deliver the content online. So usually the small group can be what's the size? Five to eight members could be an ideal size number. So outcome, expand student learning space and opportunities. 
student learning space in the sense the interaction between the student and teacher will enhance us and ultimately the outcome of the student engagement will also enhance us so students will certainly get a lot of opportunity to interact the next one establish flexible group norms so if you if your rules are stringent and very constant that only the true information established factual information is only allowed no student will show interest to come forward to contribute his or her discussion to the group because you are constant and you are looking forward to the very very quality information no that's not good better give some flexibility to the norms initially when you are discussing and brainstorming some activities this comes under establish flexible group norms build trust and promote open communication build trust and promote don't try to defend or do you, um uh, discriminate a person who is having not a very good academic background this is one of the major problem as well taking the opinions from the academically not strong uh, student is actually denied why because his subject content may be not so good but this is not a actual good practice in education system give option opportunity and trust the group members so this is the trustworthy process and improving this the outcome is mainly focused on improving the emotional intelligence this process will enhance the adaptability to work in a large group environment next for large task create group roles so creating group roles meaning to say that every single person will be getting involved into the work and contributing something to the overall completion of the work so in general if you consider this process is called team work this could be the outcome create a pre test and post test that's what i just did in today's section in the just few minutes back why pre test will just triggers the audience to think about what is the actual research question behind or what is the actual future implication of this approach so such type of knowledge will be enhanced and triggered because of the pre test and post test and this also will uh, clearly provides the learning analytics related to learner readiness and ability to learn learner readiness and ability to learn moving on consider assessment so why assessment without assessment how can you differentiate a quality approach and non quality approach so assessment is not only to discriminate the academic performance but also the progression and the quality aspect as well it interprets how students learning is taking place and how they are developing their skills so keeping all these things in view develop a assessment so this is one of the collaborative active learning strategy as well next consider using different strategies like jigsaw technique what do you mean by different techniques for example i will introduce to you two techniques one is quiz the other one is short essay question why two different types of assessments because one can trigger the recall type of technique the other one can actually trigger the synthesis evaluation and analysis application type of higher order skills they can actually describe and they can evaluate a scenario so all this type of uh, different types of approaches is always more suitable so even in the multiple choice questions you have different types of questions like e type questions k type questions and um, a type questions so different types of questions are also available true or false type of questions so different types of assessment will trigger the student's interest rather than keeping to a single format so it also improves the student content expertise as well this could be one of the outcome allow groups to reduce anxiety so when you are shifting and transform the educational practice from one mode to other mode definitely every single person who is involved in that academic setting will have the anxiety 
am right or wrong don't you have the anxiety don't i have the anxiety everyone will have some anxiety so how to manage this anxiety and stress so give some time and take some remedial action plans to you know, handle this this kind of stress in a different manner so the learning process could be enjoyable so establish group interactions why these group interactions are needed group interactions will always enhances the interpersonal skills the interpersonal skills which includes the social interaction and the communication and how they are actually delivering the concept what they taught so the whole process comes under interpersonal skills which is one of the outcome we can consider moving on to the next one use real world problems simply don't try to explain the didactic examples given in the textbook try to consider taking some real world examples like case studies and scenario based studies and explain to the students so it will develop the transferable skills these transferable skills will actually enable the student to get ready to the workplace environment so moving on to the next one help student use enquiry enquiry questioning the process of questioning so enquiry will always leads to the research question so give the opportunity to the student to enquiry about the various types of approaches so this will triggers the innovation and creativity of the student so moving on to the next one consider diversity so diversity in the sense in the in terms of academic performance for example don't try to assemble all the topmost student in a one group this is the what most of the academic institutions i would see several places doing that in order to focus mainly on the target the toppers but this is not the actual strategy of the learning philosophy learning in equal equality to every single person present in that academic setting so consider a group forming with different degrees of academic performances like one topper person one medium performance one one uh, under less performed person so combination of different students will trigger this person who actually doing the moderate and low will enhances at the latter stage this is one type of learning process will occur so effective knowledge sharing and learning will takes place as part of the outcome and gender matters why because now we can see the general discrimination meaning to say that in a small group if you put all the students seven students if consider as eight group seven students if you put male students and one student as female student how oh, it is not balanced the the social interaction is very difficult because the probability of interaction with the student the girl student with boy students is very less it's unequal so the issue giving the priority to the similar type of ratios if possible so that could be one of the mm, strategy which we also can consider enhance social interaction and use the scaffolding scaffolding is nothing but chunking of the concept improves understanding of the concept give the concepts and small idea and triggers the learning process so without saying anything directly if you give a complex situation or scenario to the students they may face some problem so give some support and trigger their learning process by uh, unfolding the essential concepts to carry forward that whole project so that they can move forward in a collaborative manner and everything will successful so responsible collaborative learning will takes place responsible so include different types of learning scenarios what are various types of learning scenarios if you look into the learning scenarios blended type of learning scenarios are more possible and flipped type of classroom or personalized type of learning scenarios so these are all various types or um, pedagogical uh, practices available in the educational um, delivery so if you look into all those scenarios why because to ultimate goal of achieving the outcome critical thinking skills the next one 
technology makes, makes collaborative learning easier. So integrate technology tool. This is going to be the latest fashion what we are doing and uh, trying to adopt the technology enhanced learning tool and integrate it into our delivery part so that we can engage the students in a technology based platform in a more collaborative manner. And also even cooperative learning can also performed using technology enhanced learning tools such as e-learning tools and web 2.0 learning tools which are dynamic not static. Student engagement anywhere any place could be the one of the outcome what we can achieve based on this type of collaborative learning. Next keep in mind the critics. So always if you do anything definitely there will be a separate group to point out what's going wrong and what's going mostly the critics will talk about the wrong things or the bad things which actually happened in your whole process. So always try to address to the critics because sometimes critics will also give a very good input so that the overall quality of your strategy can be enhanced. So dear participants, this is one of the quality enhancement approach. And also at the same time, the critics will always look for the gaps exist in your strategy. So how to close the gaps? If you listen to the critic, the critic will automatically close the gap. So it will, the critic will give the idea to close the gap. So, so you can perform this type of a, um, analysis and you can enhance your quality as well. Avoid bad group work, bad group work, unidirectional dictating. So this is not a uh, good process. So always try to exchange the information, share the information, do networking collaboration. So such type of initiatives can actually enhance the group harmony in handling critical perspectives. Not every time only a single expert person can able to handle the situation. Sometimes we may need multiple experts like multi professionals needed to uh, deal with the situation. So in such case, how can you handle the situation? It's not possible at all with one single person. So you need a harmony. You need a harmony. So the harmony in the group can only works if you can give the opportunity to every single person of the group the uh, chance to contribute. The last but not least value intellectual divergence. So teach students the value of multiplicity in the thoughts and respect each other's viewpoints. Sometimes some of the viewpoints will not be considered taken into consideration. This is what earlier also discussed, but this is like intellectual point of view and where in case of uh, intellectual point of view, if you consider the value uh, divergence, there are several things which will come into the discussion when we talk about the patenting of a molecule or um, going for a commercialization. So in such case, give the option and um, recognize the contributions from each and every team member. So this is what one of the most important thing and classroom environment encourages students independent thinking as well. If such type of enhancement is there in the process, so definitely will contribute or heartedly without having any sort of inhibition to their knowledge and they freely contribute with full pledged confidence. So knowledge check test number two. So is a teacher or student more responsible in online collaborative learning process? What do you think dear participants? Who is more important? Teacher, student, both or none? Okay, keep your answer with you. I will see you shortly. So if you look at this one, who is more responsible? If you carefully observe the pyramids of these two, the teacher's responsibility and student's responsibility both are almost equal. At one point of time, the student's responsibility will be very high. At one point of time, the, the teacher's responsibility will be very high. So followed by guided instruction, independent learning followed by collaborative learning and so on. So it will narrow down the space to both of us. So, Ultimately, both teacher and students should contribute equally. So the responsibility is also equal. 
student and teacher both are equally responsible for the whole learning process. So the knowledge test, the answer is both. I hope many of you actually could be able to identify since you may be the uh, educator. So let us move on with our next agenda. E-learning, the best instructional design. So how to organize all these things? How to organize all these things in general? So this process can be organized well in terms of the best in instructional design. Usage of the best instructional design could be more useful. So the best instructional design, one of the design model I would like to discuss in this presentation is EDIS model. EDIS model, the EDIS model is a five phase approach. The phase one starting with analysis. So first you analyze the setting, as I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation as well. So analyze the situation first, then design a strategy, how you are going to deliver and followed by develop. Develop means the physical settings, whether your classroom settings are suitable for the online delivery, whether every classroom is equipped with the digital competency tools or te technology enhanced tools, is the campus, is the digital campus, so all these things are one of the factors influencing the process of digitalization of the uh, campus. So implementation, once you plan to implement, don't implement altogether. Sometimes it may be a failure. So pilot study is the best way to implement. So conduct a pilot study on one or two years of students or one or two programs before you adapt to the whole university academic setting. This is one of the best practice where IMU, International Medical University, where in Malaysia will do. We do adopt the strategies in a phase by phase manner and we adopt the strategy and conduct the pilot study. After careful analysis, we will identify whether this strategy is suitable for the implementation or not and further actions will be taken. So last evaluation. So the same thing also applies to the pilot study and the actual study. But before performing an actual study, that means the whole transformation of the academic setting to online, please perform a pilot study. So pilot study will give you a lot of information and based on that information, you can take a decision. Now, what are the tools? Number of N number of tools are available. N number of tools are available. If you look into the normal Google browser, e-learning tools, just type the keyword. You can see thousands of pages with different learning tools developed across the globe. And various others actually identify different types of strategic applications to adopt online practice, online environment as one of the collaborative learning platform. So these are all web 2.0 tools for online student engagement. So among these, among these, I'm going to give you all an instructional training in today's section, an instructional training in the sense, I will give the on-screen demonstrations and you can all watch the demonstration and this section might be recorded and later on you can make use of this section to conduct your self-directed practice. So this is what the basic idea of doing instructional training because large group setting in a large group uh, setting we cannot actually co consider um, doing hands-on practice one by one so it's very difficult to organize so that is the reason why this is the instructional training we are providing using the most popular tool and the collaborative learning tool and platform in the e-learning strategy is the padlet 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 is one of the collaborative learning tool uh, for online engagement and also students collaborative learning as well. So let us see what is Padlet is all about. Is there any effective tool for online collaboration? Yes, of course, we have several tools. One among the several tools is Padlet. So let us see why Padlet. Why Padlet? So a free application. The first thing is free application, a general public user application. Of course, the futures are limited to a certain extent. Allows you to display information for any topic you are discussing. And allows you to make your own design. And allows you open for public contributions or full private. If you, can, if you want to contribute to the public, you can share with the public. 
or if you want to keep it confidential to your learning setting also can so next one is allows you to moderate any contributions made you can actually moderate and you can allow and you can disallow the participants actually and this one anyone can do in a real time arrangement real time all students can operate the padlet document in a real time setting that means in the uh, online platform directly they can interact and padlet document is one of the collaborative uh, learning tool where the students will generally exchange and post and submit so many options and applications are available which i am going to discuss and show you on screen in few minutes so the first one the instructional training before i start the instructional training on padlet document i would like to show you all dear participants most of you all may be from uh, non specialized education field so i would like to show from the basic steps so there are total eight basic steps you need to perform before we work with the padlet document just go to the google browser as the process of step 1 moving on to the step 2 just enter padlet and search so you will get the padlet you are beautiful this is the document this is the website and product under step 3 please enter into the padlet website and this is the padlet website how it looks like when if you consider here the login button is available so please click on the login button so you will be directed to log into padlet this is the uh, space where you enters once after pressing the live the click on the login button so in case if you have already registered account you can directly log in or you can actually directly log in using your google credentials as well the google gmail credentials as well if not microsoft if not apple so any credentials will be acceptable so you can directly enter so if not you can please proceed to sign up process sign up process so this sign up process if you carefully look here this is the sign up process just beside to the account you can see the sign up process if you press click on the sign up process you will be directed to this page so you can select your own email address and password and later on once you were you confirm the email address and password through verification because it will send one um, id verification code to your mobile registered mobile number and after verification you will be directed directly to the original page after that your account will be activated you can sign in through your gmail account and you will be directed to this page and this is the padlet working space the main the main dashboard and this dashboard if you look into this one since i am working on this in the last uh, uh, last night at 3 am so i could see this one this is the message by default i received from the padlet so hi doctor burning the midnight oil who so this is what uh, the default message i received since i the, the padlet document recognized that i am working in the midnight so this is what uh, the padlet uh, dashboard and moving on these are the various types of padlet documents available and models these are the models the platforms what is this padlet is actually so i will show some demonstrations now and also i will show some examples and how to work with the padlet and what are the various features available in the padlet document and how to engage your learners and all these features i am going to show the live demonstration so if you look into this one start with a blank start with a blank this is the option from here after in the next slide onwards i am going to enter into the padlet document and i may be paused for a while please don't worry dear participants i will be back in a very short while by uh, sharing to you all the padlet document okay so moving on the next one is basic instructional training it's time to start now i am going to share my screen and i will discuss about the applications of the padlet using online web web uh, platform so that you can more familiar how actually we can perform all these activities using padlet just hold on dear participants
may i ask organizers is everything clear can you all able to see my screen yes sir yes sir yes sir okay, okay thank you so much okay dear participants now you can all see this is the padlet document where i i have created because why i have created only three documents you may guess because the limited version is the general public user limited to only three padlet documents and the usage of the padlet document integrated the inside uh, portion you can use lot of information for example i will show one simple basic example how generally our students will participate in general discussion at international medical university if you look into the heterocyclic chemistry module this is what i opened the document now you could see the various responses given and the question given by me what is the mechanism of action of diclopidin and students are successfully delivering their answer by posting the chemical structures and all the informations very clearly so everything i organized in a streamlined manner so this is what i asked for the what is the reaction mechanism of a ring system so this is all the chemistry stuff i am dealing with in pharmacy subjects so if you look into this one these are how the students are actually doing the self directed uh, activity and some some students may also can do the hand drawn information as well can upload this is what you can you can clearly identify here a paper drawn chemical structures by one of the student actually can upload it directly into the padlet document i could re review and give the feedback and in this one i have adapted to multiple strategies for example and simultaneously i generally work with a whatsapp group as well so students will post and they will get the feedback in whatsapp group so this is what we discussed under multiple strategies of engagement so not only a single point touch point single point touch point in the sense only communication if you limit to one touch point definitely sometimes you may face some barrier so always try to have multiple touch points like whatsapp and you have the microsoft team and this one so that you can collaborate in different platforms as well so in order to do all these things an educator and students should be given some training so upon training upon conducting some training workshops to both students and staff as well so you will be familiar in adopting this kind of strategies and implementing effectively so this is what generally uh, the process how it will takes so uh, on the other other day i asked for the what is the reaction mechanism and what is the product of this chemical reaction so th this is the general process so the one student directly answered the question the reagents are more specific to develop the product so they put the reagents so this is i just don't want to explore more into the uh, subject i wanted to explore more on to the padlet operations so looking at the padlet operations if you look into this one um one of the document and this one for example if you customize this document what you can actually able to do what are the various options provided by the padlet if you want to do any any padlet operation just only thing is first one you need to go to make a padlet go to make a padlet after you press make a padlet start with a blank document so you can select the blank document so you can select the blank document currently i could not select because my three uh, opportunities have already been utilized so select a blank document any blank document this is the way you can see the streaming of your messages for example if you want to um, assemble all the messages in a grid form if you want all the messages in a stream form this is what i adopted and i showed to you i demonstrate also some other things um, by using the padlet public templates so these are the various options nearly eight options are available so you can see student dear participants so total eight options are available so making use of these options you can actually engage students in a very very effective and productive manner and padlet is a very simple tool and why i i mention padlet many times because it is very user friendly it is very user friendly no need of any huge expertise in the e learning 
or when you use expertise of computational uh, software applications and computational background no need so it's a very very basic application where uh, selection of the material and uploading double click on the padlet document can give the comments and can enter the text can even uh, uh, embed the video or web link anything is possible in a fingertips so so let us see some basic ideas behind the developing this uh, one so their participants i would like to show some options here can you able to see the options all okay this is what the padlet's home once if you go to the home this is this is where the home page all your padlets will be stored under this home page okay next the profile page where you can put your profile the teacher profile and this is the drive where all the files will be saved whatever the files actually uploaded into your padlet document by students or uh, staff you can actually make this one this one um, not actually expose it to everyone as well so it's all depends on your settings and moving on to the next one you can see the stars what is the stars stars means various statistics actually we can give the statistics means because my my padlet document has already occupied with uh, many um, already the given uh, contributions already done the opportunities have utilized it. and if you go to the settings i will show the settings clearly and this is the various settings basic info password i mean communication all these things you can actually after doing in, in case if you are not interested to maintain this account don't keep the account and use the uh, web host space better delete your account permanently it would it won't be a conflict of interest to anyone so this there is an option here to delete the account permanently so next moving on to the next one if you consider if you consider this one the other settings if and other settings in case if you are very much impressed with the padlet of uh, applications you can actually go to upgrade you can go to upgrade and if you press the upgrade the upgrade plans will be shown here and whichever the upgrade plan is suitable for you you may adopt okay so uh, if if in case of a padlet how to use the padlet so um, uh, as a as a educator you can just directly double click here directly double click you can see this explorer you can see this explorer you can ask what is collaborative learning just a direct question what is a collaborative learning so students will ask students will answer uh, by double clicking on this wall and later on you can arrange this all content in a different different aspects as i mentioned to you you can because the, the selection of the template is also possible in different uh, conditions like not only in the beginning so in the middle if you want to transform to some other setting also possible at the end if you want to arrange everything in a cascade also possible so you can shift between the options given so if if you can consider here you can see the option here is the uploading option this is the uploading button where you can upload different files and pick file if, once you press pick file you will be directed to our folders so our folders whichever the folder is available so your document can be selected and you can pick file and upload so the next one if you consider this one this is the enter url so this url enterings is actually when you are discussing something if you would like to give some additional reference resources to your students you can just copy the link of the web address and paste here actually i can do that using uh, this one, any one of the link for example this is our teams link i just copied and pasted here so this one save so this is how we can actually perform different activities so the link has already been saved and i can direct directly by clicking on this one because this is already hyperlinked so this one is hyperlinked so i can direct it to the next page as well so the page whichever is needed 
So the next one, if you edit post, transfer post, transfer post, you can do that and even you can edit the post. And if you see, expand the post and set as cover. So what is the background? This is not this is not the background I don't like. So I just want to change the background or header and footer. Every single option is available. And if we look for the sharing, the sharing process, because sharing is very important, because sharing of the knowledge uh, among the members and networking with the student learners is the key component of collaborative learning. So how to share the Padlet document just by using a simple click share. You have multiple privileges here to do the sharing process. And I strongly recommend to you all dear participants as we are in the technology enhanced zone. So better stop sharing the links. Give the QR code. It's a digital platform directly. Nowadays, the QR code can be scanned and migrated to the platform wherever we, because the main reason is the mobile devices usage is rather much more compared to the laptops and other gadgets. OK, so get QR code. If I press get QR code, this is the QR code of my Padlet. So if you focus on this QR code, the scanner automatically will be directed to this uh, Padlet document. If you have access directly can log in. If it is a public document, if it is not public document, I have put some credentials to enter. You may not be able to access the document as well. Of course, you may need to ask my permission and you need to send the activation link. I need to provide you the password and so on. These are some um, uh, restricted uh, constraints also we can put. This password protection is also can be given. So these are all advanced features. Everything is free to use for the three documents. But beyond three documents, if you want, it may be uh, you may need to subscribe that. So embed in your blog. So using this link, you can directly embed into any LMS learning management system or even in your portal. So in your web page or you can even share in the Facebook as well. So you can share using email. So these are the various sharing options. Google Classroom. This is what not discussed How to share the Google Classroom. There is a process also can be shared. So save as image and all because whatever the document information you have dra drafted and discussed and brainstormed and reposited on the Padlet document can be saved at later stage in the form of PDF document or you can you can save in the form of CSL or save as images. Any way is possible. So there are multiple options and um, so dear participants, if you consider this one and change of privacy, this is the point I am talking about. So private, once if I put private, no one can access this document anymore. Only my personal information can be stored and password, it document will be password protected. So only the persons and who actually having the password can only open and access the document and secret. So this is the secret one is actually the different form of um, uh, sharing, meaning to say that in your general Google search, this document will not come as one of the element. Why? Because you kept it as a secret. If you put public, every single person, whoever searches about the keywords present in your document, they could see your document and they can actually explore into the content what you presented in the document and they can actually uh, perform so many activities even with your document. It all depends on the permissions. So what permission I have created here can write, meaning to say that you can produce some information and you can reposit in my Padlet document. So if I change the one can read, so you only can read the document properties and what are the posts I have posted here and can edit, can you edit, you can actually delete the document as well. So these are various privileges we can also have in the Padlet platform. So dear participants, using Padlet is one of the basic tool. At the same time, it can do so many things and well organization using Padlet can, can uh, adapt your learning process to very higher order level. As I, as I experienced since long time of this process, these are recently opened Padlet documents.
सर वासु सर वासु सर जस्ट मिनट सर यू आर म्यूटेड सर प्लीज अनम्यूट सर प्लेटफॉर्म्स इट कैन सपोर्ट so moving on to the next one uh, further i would like to show some other information uh, i just mentioned to you all how to show how to post and even you can uh, google some information from here as well directly google browser is possible and you can directly google here using a keyword collaborative learning for example So directly you can actually google and you can see the collaborative learning so this is what directly you can also consider putting here and i could see the document is getting uploaded into my padlet yes i could see the document has already been uploaded this is how you the new references in a real time that means synchronous manner so uh, dear participants i would also like to highlight most important ways of engaging students one is synchronous the other one is asynchronous i am talking about online engagement but if you talk about the synchronous in a conventional setting it is face to face whereas in case of asynchronous online or synchronous online it has to be taking place the learning all process in a uh, real time setting that means the giving inputs and expecting outputs and the same time students are giving inputs everything will be simultaneous process so this is the synchronous type of learning so in order to do the synchronous collaborative learning online learning padlet is one of the suitable document as well i would suggest so next uh, i would also show show some uh, other informations like uh, this is what we can actually put uh, different different backgrounds you can see the wallpaper color scheme font what you want attributions display author name and each post if you want author name who actually displayed in order to make it if you want for example if you don't want the any discrimination of the ideas or you can just deactivate this particular option so that automatically no uh, the, every information will be anonymous so you consider seeing all the information in a equality manner so there is no discrepancy or there is no discrimination will occur so such such type of initiative some students may uh, like so this is what uh, i i also like to highlight and reactions you can see and reactions under reactions you can give the um, options to the students for the feedback and this feedback can be constructive or a descriptive so or if you want you can just put the uh, uh, feedback like voting or stars rating or grading so different types of feedback also you can allow the students to perform and this is one of the process at the same time you also instead of giving the direct marks to the students you can also engage the students in the learning process you can just give yes or no so that the students may not be offended so much and they consider they don't consider as a criticism rather constructive feedback so other things if you consider these are the various one uh, so sh shared or embedded this these documents if you want to delete the document clear all posts is also possible changing the format this is what i mentioned changing the format if you don't want the streamlined format if you want to adapt some other format is possible so you can do that and archives delete if you want to delete all posts can be can also possible so moving on to the next one i just wanted to go back to home they it's open already so whichever the padlet documents if you have some information present inside this will be comes under archived if you look into the gallery this is the gallery the padlet gallery 
so this one is what i would like to show to you all so that you can all have very good knowledge about how the uh, educators are really using not only educators some other online bloggers and uh, online scientific writers also using research scholars or student leaders also using the uh, padlet document in various types of settings if you consider this one in organizations conducting employees meetings so these are all the various types of uh, applications associated with padlet just i would like to open one and show you mapping the talents and building this is what one of the document you could see this is what the mapping and talents the building so the, in this document they have mapped several uh, places with respect to the buildings in the world okay uh, if not it is not so uh, uh, useful for us this we will look into some uh, creative writing yes creative writing let's open and create to see the creative writing okay this is what the summaries of the essay uh, students actually posted after that you can evaluate and give the feedback so th these are all the gallery the gallery is full accessible the gallery is full accessible meaning to say that if you select any of the gallery template and you can make it as your own template as well so this is the opportunity given in the padlet uh, workspace okay dear participants this is what i would like to explore various applications of the padlet uh, in connection to online student collaborative learning so simply in a simpler words what i would like to highlight here the student engagement is more possible in collaborative learning whereas asynchronous online learning will sometimes you know, may be destructive so because there are several other types of uh, factors will generally takes place like uh, um, student may miss or diverted with the uh, cyber gogies or hita gogies what is the this one these are some new uh, pedagogies which are associated with the technology development so these disruptive technologies may influence on the student performance so collaborative learning and student engagement uh, in a platform Uh, will be more useful to understand the students progress as well as performance and the quality of uh, uh, teaching and learning activities what we are performing so all these things will be enhancing the overall quality of the delivery what we are delivering in our program whether the students upon completion of the program whether they are achieving the learning outcomes intended learning outcomes or not so this is the main objective of doing this um, webinar section so let us see i would like to go back to my presentation now and i want to sh uh, show you some information uh, uh, i just uh, stop sharing for a while again i will be back Uh, can you all able to see my padlet uh, this uh, screen yes sir okay thanks yes, thank you it's good to go okay so now we successfully discussed on various instructional training applications of padlet it is a online collaborative learning tool so uh, i just wanted to cross check with you all whether the frequently asked questions are we really addressed all the questions or not how do i start a new padlet yes how do i post yes how do i control who sees content on my padlet yes and how do i turn comments on and off yes under the settings it's available how can i modify my padlet's appearance also possible we we discussed on that and how do i change the layout also possible we discussed on that how do i add contributors also we discussed and how do i attach link or file to my post and how can i share a padlet so all the components what a educator will generally ask in the frequently asked questions have been successfully addressed in this webinar i would like to proceed further to say that this is uh, the the we have successfully logged out and you are trying on using the padlet now so dear participants please feel feel happy to have the padlet one of the famous tool to uh, keep in practice and engage your students effectively and enjoy the learning process so moving on these are some additional resources for you 
So 30 ways to use Padlet in the classroom. If you have the QR code or scanner, you can directly scan from here. You can see 30 ways to use Padlet in the classroom. There are n number of ways. These are top 30. So you can keep exploring, be as a lifelong learner, although we are educator. We are the ex educator is an educator where a lifelong learning is one of the um, uh, behavioral attitude we should have. We all together as educator make the learning experience wonderful and enjoyable to the, all the students in this pandemic situation. So the fruitful outcomes of this webinar, keep calm and teach online. Keep calm and engage your learners. These are the IMU group of companies where I am working for. The emerging strategy which is currently in practice, are we still prepared, are we ready? That we will discuss in other time whenever the opportunity comes. What is beyond? Beyond means bring your own device to the campus. This is the emerging strategy. So these are the acknowledgements I would like to acknowledge one by one for their valuable uh, contribution and the guidance given to me. Prof Professor Mohammad Zul Kifli, Dean School of Pharmacy International Medical University, Malaysia. Professor Ong Chin Ng, Associate Dean, Academic School of Pharmacy, IMU, Malaysia. Professor Malikarjun Rao Pichika, Associate Dean, School of Pharmacy Research, IMU, Malaysia. Dr. Lee Choi Sin, Head of the Department Pharmaceutical Chemistry, School of Pharmacy, IMU, Malaysia. Professor Vai Rajendra Prasad, my mentor and research director from Andhra University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, India. Dr. B. Sriram Muthikar, Director, Vikas Educational Society, India. Dr. I. Shankar Rao Garu, Director, Vikas Educational Society, India. Dr. B. V. S. N. Muthikar, Director, Vikas Educational Society, India. And not but not least, Professor Dr. K. V. Naguji Garu, Principal, Sri Venkateshwara College of Pharmacy, a pioneer of pharmacy principals in India. Yeah, Faculty of Pharmacy, all the organizing committee members, Sri Venkateshwara College of Pharmacy, and chairman and members. So below participants and press and media. So I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to each and every person responsible for this faculty development program. These are the related references I have used to construct the slides. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Vasudeva. You have given a very elaborate and informative talk regarding this e-learning, and uh, he told that uh, student engagement is very challenging aspect uh, in this uh, e-learning process, and how to overcome that one, and the um, teaching strategies, what are to be followed for effective e-learning process and uh, the outcomes uh, of these teaching objectives um, you explained very nicely i think i hope this uh, session is very much useful to both the faculty as well as the students and i am very much thankful to you for uh, uh, accepting my request and uh, uh, gave a very uh, important uh, talk uh, um, in this event and I am also thankful to your HOD and Dean for uh, allowing you to participate in this event. Thank you to you and to your um, authorities also. Thank you, Vastara. Thank you and so now much. The, now the question and answer session will be there. I hand out this session to Bhavani Madam. Bhavani? Yes, sir. sir. Questions? If any questions will be uh, can ask. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. It was an excellent session from you. I want to share you some messages of the participants of YouTube link. Uh, Mr. Chigaram Butla Kistaya, he is saying that it's a valuable information by Vasudevara. You have improved and went high level and I am proud of you. And some other person named Jubedur Rahman, he is saying that very informative. 
next participant mr bharat he is saying that next time we need webinar on covid 19 we like your way of representation to get attention on present trending topics sir one question from participant megana patnaik uh, sir how to use padlet slide share the padlet slide share that's uh, th uh, thank you uh, ms bhavani for uh, sharing the question i'm just eager to answer the participants uh, question that's it so uh, thank you once again and thank you dear participants for your questions and uh, the comments given to me i'm very glad to receive all your suggestions comments for the future improvement as well so when i talk about the slide share slide share can be uh, cannot play as a slide uh, presentation but you can uh, uh, share the slides in the form of a file that means you can convert all your slides into a pdf document and you can upload the pdf document as well yeah that's very easy to do that or if not there is one advanced option to convert all the slides into video and you can even upload the video into the padlet document but there is a constraint the padlet document can support the video up to 5 minutes only i do not know whether the advanced options after premium purchase uh, these options may be modified but um, as of now i know 5 minutes video is the limitation so these are the two ways you can actually do that yeah hello sir my question is sir my question is huh. there any tel tools sir available now tel tools uh, because padlet comes under technology enhanced tool okay sir yeah padla actually they, they, they these two terms uh, most of them will confuse between these two terms mrs pamani i would like to highlight these two terms one is e learning and the other one is technology enhanced learning e learning is totally based on web that means the web based applications whereas the technology enhanced learning which includes the equipment like vr augmented reality virtual reality and um adapting to some devices all those things everything technology related but e learning is mostly online based learning yeah this is the main uh, difference between e learning and technology and health learning sir everybody is saying that it was an excellent session informative session from the participants sir oh thank you so much dear participants i would be very fortunate and glad to have you all in this my presentation it was nice yes, sir once yeah yes, sir once again i am thanking you sir for your informative session hand over to padmashri ma'am door ra kon to video on karlate tomo tum karon dikhta thank you Two options are in the premium package. Modified, but um, as of now, I know five minutes video is the limitation. So these are the two ways you can actually do that. Somebody, sir, YouTube, sir, that's why. Hello. Hello, Padma Sri, madam. हेलो हेलो पद्मश्री मैडम एम बी हियर सर हेलो हेलो हां मैडम पद्मश्री मैडम हेलो आई थिंक देयर माइट बी सम नेटवर्क ड्रॉप इज सर नो वरीज इट्स क्वाइट रादर यूजुअल मोस्ट यूजुअल मोस्ट ऑफन इट विल टेक प्लेस Are you able to hear me? Your voice is breaking, ma'am. No, my voice is breaking. My internet is not stable here. Hello. 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 Hello.
పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ tomorrow day 2 session by dr n koteshwar of assistant professor of pharmacology collaborative health sciences university esa california you know, health sciences university esa and uh, by tomorrow by sharp by 10 o'clock all of you attend and thank you one and all thank you vasudevara for uh, your nice presentation i am very very much thankful to you thank you sir thank you, thank you all thank the management organizing committee members and dear participants all once again i would like to thank and see you all again thank you all signing off dr vasu from okay. international medical university thank you ప్రశాంత్ సార్ హలో